On January 4th, Russia experienced a significant internet outage affecting a wide range of services and websites across the country. The disruption was attributed to issues with the domain name system security extensions, specifically during updates to the system's security extension key, which led to the inaccessibility of .ru and .rf and Cyrillic uh, domains. The outage impacted major web-based platforms such as Tinkoff Bank, Avito, Wildberries, the search engine Yandex. These are all sort of the Russian equivalents of all of your online services. Uh, telecoms provider MTS and others. The .ru and .rf domain coordination center restoring Russia's high-level national domains resolved the issue within two hours after it was reported. However, DNS problems persisted for a long time until the updated data was distributed throughout the system. An ongoing investigation aims to understand the primary causes of the outage with early investigations uh, pointing to software issues related to creating encryption keys. <clears throat> the incident has sparked discussions regarding the robustness of Russia's internet infrastructure and its efforts to establish a sovereign internet system. The sovereign internet law, which came into force in November 2019, aims to create an independent Russian internet that is protected from external actors. This law allows for central internet traffic control and monitoring, the creation of a national domain name system, and the capability for authorities to isolate the Russian internet from the global network during what is deemed a national emergency. This initiative is seen as an effort to increase surveillance and censorship within Russia by many uh, Russians and uh, outside uh, commentators, particularly in the lead up to the March 2024 so-called presidential elections. Next item. On January 31st, 2024, the Ukrainian military conducted a significant strike on the Russian-occupied Belbek military airfield in Crimea. The operation reportedly resulted in the destruction of at least three Russian aircraft. The Ukrainian Air Force commander, Mikola Oleschuk, acknowledged the operations, emphasizing the strategic importance of the airfield located near Sevastopol, the major Russian naval base. Despite Russia's claim of thwarting the attack by intercepting 20 Ukrainian missiles with 17 shot down over the Black Sea and three more over the peninsula, and they claim causing no damage to aviation equipment, evidence, the strike targeted a communication center at the airfield, as confirmed by both reports and satellite images. Moreover, obituaries in Russian online groups and the acknowledgement of losses by uh, various Russian sources in their Ministry of Defense serve as confirmation of the strike's impact. The Russian telegram channel Astra reported that a missile hit the airfield's communication point, and subsequent reports indicated damage to one Su-30 fighter jet and two Su-30, sorry, Su-27 fighter planes. Additionally, the strike reportedly led to the death of at least 10 Russian military personnel, including Lieutenant Gen General Alexander Tatarenko. A Russian Special Forces training camp near the settlement of uh, Gvardievskoy, Gvardievskoy uh, was also hit, killing uh, nine GRU operatives, so it was a GRU camp, uh, and injuring seven, along with uh, destroying several pieces of equipment there. Next item. Also on January 31st, Russia and Ukraine conducted a, another large prisoner of war exchange with Russia claiming to release 109, sorry, 195 Ukrainian soldiers and Ukraine stating it had received 207 people back. So in other words, there's a discrepancy between the number of soldiers Russia claimed to release and the number Ukraine is stated to have received. The exchange was facilitated with the help of the United Arab Emirates and marked the 50th exchange since the onset of the full-scale invasion nearly two years ago, with a total of 3,035 POWs having been repatriated. The individuals returned in this swap included Ukrainian soldiers who had fought in significant battles, such as the defense of Mariupol, Kherson, and Snake Island, with 30 injured or seriously ill. 
The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, confirmed Moscow's willingness to continue such exchanges while Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized the importance of returning all Ukrainians home, regardless of the circumstances. Uh, this represents a shift. Uh, this is maybe my opinion a bit. This represents a shift in the previous rhetoric from Russia, which they expressed very limited interest in POW exchanges overall. And I would say the shift is likely an effort to secure support during the up call, uh, the upcoming so-called elections. Right. Uh, I think that uh, Putin probably wants some good, you know, images of, uh, uh, you know, them getting people home uh, as part of this effort to shore up support during the uh, so-called elections. Uh, in addition to that, this exchange, uh, I, I should mention too, the reason I, I mentioned this is the exchange occurred in spite of a recent uh, accusation from the Kremlin that the uh, something disrupted the exchange last week. And what disrupted the exchange last week, according to Russia, was an incident that occurred on January 24th uh, when a Russian military transport plane uh, reportedly carrying Ukrainian prisoners of war, according to Russia, along with uh, Russian crew members and soldiers crashed in the Belgorod region close to the Russian-Ukrainian border, uh, killing all on board. Uh, previously, Russia accused Ukraine of shooting down the military transport plane, alleging it was targeted with a Patriot missile and uh, it was en route to the prisoner exchange. Uh, the Russian government called it a terrorist act and suggested that Kyiv had knowledge that it was being carrying prisoners of war, but chose to shoot down the aircraft to, quote, tarnish Moscow's reputation. Ukraine, however, has neither confirmed nor denied its direct involvement in the plane's downing, emphasizing the aircraft was, however, a legitimate target given its military nature and the potential cargo of weapons that it was carrying to be used against Ukraine. Ukraine has demanded the return of the bodies of these alleged Ukrainian POWs aboard the West that Russia so far has not fulfilled or acknowledged, uh, according to Ukrainian officials. Uh, Ukraine's stance is that without tangible evidence or readiness from Russia to transfer the bodies, uh, or any other evidence for that matter, uh, the claims of POWs being on the plane remain unverified. Uh, therefore, Ukraine's military intelligence has underscored the need for international investigation to uncover the true circumstances surrounding the, tra the, the crash and the nature of the plane's mission. Uh, the Kremlin basically has sort of not acknowledged any of this, and uh, Western intelligence has uh, suggested that it was a Patriot, probably a Patriot missile that downed it. This would be within the capabilities of the system. Russia did present uh, some wreckage of a Patriot missile that seems, you know, convincing enough. Um, but, you know, there's no confirmation from any other sources outside of Russia itself that there were any Ukrainian POWs on board the aircraft. Uh, so that is the uh, you, the prisoner exchange and the previous incident uh, that Russia claimed uh, stopped this exchange from happening last week. But uh, it's good to know that it happened anyway. We do hope that Russia does exchange prisoners. Uh, it's a very important. Uh, the Ukrainians uh, in Russian uh, POW camps are uh, treated in uh, extremely appalling conditions. As you saw uh, a large contingent uh, of those people coming back were se severely injured or ill. So. Um, we, we really applaud these efforts. Uh, next item. On February 1st, 2024, Ukrainian forces successfully struck and sank a Russian Black Sea Fleet vessel near occupied Crimea. The targeted vessel was the missile boat Ivanovets, a component of Russia's formidable maritime forces in the region. This attack was executed using sea drones, marking a sophisticated advancement in Ukraine's military capabilities uh, concerning Russia's naval assets. The operation was carried out by a unit of the Ukrainian armed forces known as Group 13, which utilized naval drones. The Ivanovets was patrolling on Lake Danuzlov in western Crimea, a strategic location connected to the Black Sea, making it uh, an important target for Ukrainian forces. The attack resulted in the Ivanovets sustaining multiple direct hits to its hull, causing damage that rendered the vessel incapable of any further operations and ultimately leading to its sinking. The Ukrainian military aid intelligence agency, HUR, released footage of the event, which you're watching, uh, showcasing the effectiveness of the drone strike and the eventual sinking of the vessel. The loss of the Ivanovets is considered a substantial blow to the Russian Black Sea fleet especially given the limited number of ships of the same class within that fleet. The operation highlights Ukraine's ongoing effort to challenge Russia's maritime dominance of the Black Sea and disrupt their logistical capabilities there. 
The operation's success was made possible partly through the support of the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine and the United 24 platform, which represents a collaborative effort between uh, private and public uh, sectors of Ukrainian government, military society, uh, a volunteer effort to get drones uh, working to achieve these, these goals. Uh, so it's a testament to uh, collaboration between a lot of different groups, uh, sort of coordinated in part by United 24 and the Ministry of Digital Transformation. Uh, next item. Also on February 1st, uh, 2024, European Union leaders reached a unanimous agreement to provide Ukraine with a significant financial aid package worth 50 billion euros, uh, approximately 54 billion USD. Overcoming previous opposition from Hungary, uh, this deal will be crucial for Ukraine's long-term economic and financial stability. It sends a clear message of continued EU support as the full-scale Russian invasion approaches its third year. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky hailed the unanimous decision as a testament to strong EU unity, emphasizing its importance for Ukraine's sustained support in the face of Russia's continued aggression. The package aims to offer a steadfast, long-term, predictable funding for Ukraine, ensuring the country's resilience uh, against ongoing challenges. This agreement was particularly notable for overcoming weeks of resistance from Hungary, uh, with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban eventually agreeing to the package after receiving assurances that the aid would be used, quote, sensibly and would not detract from funds earmarked for Budapest. In the lead up to the agreement, EU leaders employed strategic diplomacy to isolate Erban, who has maintained close ties to Moscow to ensure the passage of the aid package. This involved a concerted effort by EU diplomats and officials leveraging the unity of the other 26 member states to pressure Orban into an agreement. Key figures such as uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, French President Emmanuel Macron, and Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni played pivotal roles in these efforts. The deal includes provisions for a yearly discussion of the package and the possibility of a review in two years, quote, if needed, but crucially does not allow for any unilateral veto by Hungary. This outcome demonstrates the EU's commitment to supporting Ukraine while navigating internal challenges and emphasizing the bloc's strategic approach to maintain unity in the face of this uh, threat from Russia. The financial package is critical for Ukraine, providing much needed budget support to sustain the country through the ongoing war. Despite previous vetoes and opposition, the eventual agreement does uh, showcase that the EU uh, has been able to unite for this common cause, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing uh, more uh, coordination from the EU in the future. Uh, next item. Basically, the last item for me this week, uh, just a couple of uh, military aid uh, items. Uh, following President Zelensky's visit three weeks ago to Estonia, uh, they delivered a significant military aid package to Ukraine valued at 80 million euros. The aid package includes uh, critical supplies such as Javelin anti-tank missiles, machine guns, small arms ammunition, diving equipment, and various unspecified vehicles. Estonia's uh, commitment to supporting Ukraine extends beyond immediate military aid. Uh, the Estonian president, Alar Karis, uh, previously announced a plan to allocate 1.2 billion in aid to Ukraine by the year 2027. This long-term support is intended to aid Ukraine in defense and reconstruction efforts. And uh, the latest aid package and the long-term commitment uh, uh, continue to establish Estonia's role as uh, one of the leading military donors relative to GDP, with their total defense contributions amounting to around 500 mil million euros uh, since the onset of the full-scale war. Additionally, the Greek government, following a request from the United States, is preparing a significant military aid package for Ukraine. This package includes weapons and equipment that the Greek armed forces uh, no longer are using. The decision comes after a letter from U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken to Greek Prime Minister uh, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, promising to prioritize the provision of a KC-135 military transport aircraft to Greece in exchange. The aircraft is expected to enhance the operational capabilities of the Greek fighter jet fleet, thereby enabling Greece to transfer equipment to Ukraine that is surplus to its needs. The United States has agreed to provide funding of up to 200 million for this initiative to take place. The military aid package from Greece to Ukraine is expected to include Soviet-era defense systems such as the TOR, 
uh, sorry, Tor, <laughs> OSA, uh, S300, and ZU-23-2 anti-aircraft system. And explicitly stated which of these systems and how many uh, will be sent to Ukraine. The political and military leadership of Greece has directed the relevant agencies to prepare for the transfer of outdated weapons and equipment to Ukraine and highlighted the strategic depth of Greek-American relations and Greece's commitment to supporting Ukraine's defense capabilities. So that is it for the uh, major news items this week.